So we're going to go through the, uh, the island's history here. That's what I do. I'm an interp ranger and basically uh, give the talks on Alcatraz and also protect the, the resources. And one last thing I really got to stress that we are doing is restoration uh, of the buildings on Alcatraz to stabilize the buildings and to keep that island open for future generations to, to visit and to learn about the layers of history. Uh, there's a ugly rumor that uh, Alcatraz is closing. We get people that come out and tell us that uh, their neighbor instructed them they better get there soon because it's not gonna be safe. But we're doing our best to stabilize the buildings and keep that island open. And so without further ado, we should uh, go through uh, this little uh, PowerPoint uh, that I've got here. I've got some historic photos and then some uh, shots that I've taken over the years too. And uh, I love this shot, uh, the, the, the sunsets. Uh, we have an evening program even uh, for the general public to go out to the island and see the lights of San Francisco come up. Uh, it's a spectacular place to, to, to view the Bay Area. Uh, the island is a sandstone rock. And what you're looking at here on this photo is uh, the island with vegetation and uh, gardens now. But, it, but when the American Indians, uh, Native Americans in the area, ventured out to Alcatraz, they were going to a barren rock. It was a sandstone rock, probably with uh, a lot of white bird guano on it, but nothing else. And so it was a perfect habitat for seabirds. And uh, uh, the name Alcatraz comes from the Spanish explorers looking out on the rock and uh, saying, La Isla de los Alcatrazes, the island of the strange bird. The pelican, we believe, was the bird that they were uh, uh, seeing on that island. So it was a very large uh, bird rookery, and uh, the Spaniards give us the name, but they never built anything on Alcatraz. Mexican rule takes over after the Spanish explorers were there, uh, and uh, they never built anything on Alcatraz. In 1846, we have the Bear Flag Revolt in California. John C. Fremont and Kit Carson came into San Francisco, and they spiked the cannons at the Spanish fortifications that uh, now being run by Mexico at uh, Fort Point, that location. The Castillo de San Juan was the fortress that had 13 cannons at the entrance to the Golden Gate. And the, uh, the, the Bear Flag Revolt uh, folks spiked the cannons, uh, drive a nail down the rear end of the barrel and break that nail off so you can't fire the cannon and they proceed to Monterey, California, and raise the California state flag, the, the bear flag, or some say it looks like a pig, the, the pig flag, but the original flag in 1846 is hoisted up, and two years later, gold is discovered in California. So California became a state of the Union in 1850, and by 1853, the United States Army uh, arrives on Alcatraz Island. Now you can see from this photo here, it's pointing uh, to the Golden Gate. Some say that meant the, the, the gateway to the gold fields uh, on uh, either side of the gateway. It's a mile across uh, from San Francisco to Marin. Um, they, along with Alcatraz, constructed uh, Fort Point on the San Francisco side, and construction started a Fort Baker on the Marin side. And uh, basically, with Alcatraz in the middle of the bay, you've got uh, a crossfire. They called it triangular defense. So this shot is a great uh, shot of some of the soldiers lounging on Alcatraz. Now, uh, the cannons uh, basically were mounted just before the Civil War, but construction starts on Alcatraz in 1853. And by 1861, we've got roughly 100 cannon on Alcatraz to protect that harbor. This particular cannon that you're looking at would have fired uh, a 400 pound cannonball about a mile to two miles out into the San Francisco Bay. The only problem with these cannons uh, on Alcatraz were that uh, they weren't very accurate. They had a 5% accuracy. <laughs> so you're kind of crossing your fingers hoping something's going to hit. Now, another thing that arrives on Alcatraz is the lighthouse. And you've got a lot of uh, vessel traffic coming in with the uh, uh, 49ers, of course, coming the next year. It took them a year to come around the Horn and sail into San Francisco Bay. So you've got a a uh, very large navigational hazard out in the middle of the bay. 
uh, that rock is a 22-acre rock, and uh, we needed a lighthouse. So we get the credit for the first lighthouse on the West Coast was on Alcatraz Island. 1854, the light uh, uh, turns on, and uh, a lot of folks come out to the island just to see uh, the location of where the first light was on the West Coast. Now, this particular light... Uh, house was uh, torn down in 1909, and they needed a taller light uh, to go over the new prison building. Uh, but uh, a, a third order Fresnel lens, it would have been in the uh, lamp room of that lighthouse structure there. So we get a lot of lighthouse aficionados. I had some folks out today that came all the way from Florida just to see where the first light on the West Coast was. Now, great shot of the cannonballs. Uh, they were ready for action when the Civil War breaks out. And uh, this is uh, just across from the lighthouse. And uh, off in the distance, you can see Angel Island. Uh, so the corner of the building that you uh, have uh, at the top of the hill is known as the Citadel. And uh, those appear to be some officers standing in front of those cannonballs there. That was their housing at the top of the hill. The uh, Citadel was a three-story structure with a defensive ditch going around the building with two drawbridges, and uh, they were ready for action. You can see some cannon barrels, too, uh, just uh, to the right of the building there, and uh, quite a few cannonballs ready uh, to fire at an enemy. Uh, that would be one of the largest type of cannons that they had, and you can see a circular uh, uh, track there that you could pivot that cannon around and fire at uh, a vessel coming in through the Golden Gate. Love this shot. You can see uh, Telegraph Hill just to the left. That peak there would be Telegraph Hill where Coy Tower is now, and North Beach just to the right of that shot there. Do we have any action on Alcatraz? No. Best type of military, you never have to use it. Uh, they were ready, as you can see, quite a few cannon. They called it a ring of fire all the way around Alcatraz, and uh, nobody ever ventured to uh, make their way into San Francisco Bay. During the Civil War, we had concerns about the Confederacy coming into San Francisco and uh, taking the gold that was uh, being uh, brought into town here. So. Uh, Confederate sympathizers were brought to Alcatraz and imprisoned on the rock during the Civil War. There were plots to take over the harbor, and a wealthy businessman in San Francisco that sided with the Confederacy had purchased a ship with cannons and rifles on it, and they were going to blockade the harbor until the Confederate Navy uh, sailed around the Horn and came into San Francisco Bay. And the old saying, loose lips, sink ships, and they were arrested and sent to Alcatraz Island. Uh, we have had several jail cells over the years. The first one was in the guardhouse, Sally Port entrance, and it was a small room that grew to 600 jail cells that everybody sees uh, today in the main prison building. This shot shows uh, Hopi elders that were also incarcerated on Alcatraz. Native Americans were brought out to the island. Uh, basically, they didn't want to send their children to the boarding schools uh, to wash the uh, Indian out of them, quote unquote, and uh, they were brought to Alcatraz and incarcerated because of that, uh, not wanting to send their children out to the island. So we get our start early on in the 1800s as a uh, military penitentiary. The island was actually uh, blown up on, uh, in sections of the rock to create a uh, sheer cliff so that you'd have to climb up the cliff while they were shooting at you. And uh, this shot kind of shows the, the, uh, the steep cliff there and also a new lighthouse that appears around the turn of the century. Uh, structures like the Officers Club, this building uh, was added also around the turn of the century. A lot of concrete structures came out to the island at the turn of the century. The cannons were obsolete on Alcatraz, and uh, the Army decides to give us a new mission. Uh, disciplinary Barracks, Pacific Branch, Alcatraz Island, 1907, we get that new mission. And so this was a structure that had a bowling alley in it, pool tables, and it was a social hall 
for the officers on Alcatraz that were working as correctional officers. So change of uh, mission at the turn of the century, and uh, there's a, a nice shot of the bowling alley. It's just a two-lane bowling alley, but nonetheless, uh, it became a little city uh, that the military had created. Another fascinating thing to me is, is the vegetation on Alcatraz. Uh, uh, the soil was brought to the rock from Angel Island, and they spread the dirt all around the rock and planted uh, the trees and the rose gardens uh, that you'll see out uh, on the island today still exist. Now, the military uses Alcatraz all the way till 1933, uh, and when the Depression hit the country, that's when the army uh, leaves the rock. And uh, it was up for grabs, and another federal agency takes the island and turns it into a supermax penitentiary. So uh, Jagger Hoover is quoted as saying, we're gonna take all the bad apples within the prison system and lock them up on the rock and let them rot out there. So this shot shows the first federal prisoners arriving. This is Al Capone's train that arrives at the dock. And uh, the uh, um, 50 prisoners that were on that train were also escorted by correctional officers with uh, high-powered weapons, uh, Tommy guns, and for security, the train, the railroad cars, were placed on a barge in Tiburon, California, and towed to the dock of Alcatraz, uh, just to keep Al and these other prisoners uh, on that train until they stepped off uh, the dock of Alcatraz. Uh, the shot also, just to the left of the train, you can see a guard tower. So these type of towers were introduced to the island and uh, uh, the feds change it, uh, change the look by bringing in the barbed wire fences and uh, uh, it changes from a disciplinary barracks where you had soldiers that had broke in military law, maybe went AWOL or struck an officer. They weren't the bank robbers and murders that would show up in August in 1934 is when the feds take over. I always uh, try to also throw out to the public that the main reason why we're uh, on Alcatraz as a, a national park site, historic site, is because of the military history. The 80 years that the United States Army occupies Alcatraz is the main focus and, and or reason why we are saved as a national park site. The Federal Bureau of Prisons occupied the island for 29 years, and uh, the Park Service has been there longer than it was a federal penitentiary. Uh, we took the island over in 1972. The officers in this shot were hand-picked. Uh, the uh, correctional officers that were employed on the island, we had about 100 officers to uh, watch over the convicts, and uh, the guard ratio on Alcatraz was one officer for every three convicts. So uh, uh, that's a very high guard ratio compared to facilities today where you, know, you might have one to 100, but in Alcatraz it was one to three. And uh, the average population on Alcatraz for the federal prisoner uh, was roughly 250 to 300 prisoners at one time. Classic shot of the dock tower, and uh, you'd have a man up in that tower with a 30 odd six rifle and a uh, 45 handgun and a Thompson submachine gun, and basically his job is to monitor and make sure that uh, uh, no one's going to escape into the San Francisco Bay. And uh, if a vessel came too close, within 200 yards, that tower would open up and fire at the vessel. So uh, they meant business on the rock. The structure on the left of the tower was housing for the correctional officers. So these were army barracks that were turned into apartments uh, for the correctional officers. And roughly, we had about 75 to 100 children uh, basically take uh, the vessel uh, uh, from the dock. Just to the right of the guard tower is the Alcatraz boat, the Warden Johnson. It would take children to school every day, and uh, the family members could go to town and shop and maybe see a movie and then come back to their homes. So uh, the apartment building that you see on that dock there uh, was a nice place to, to live, and we've uh, talked with many of the correctional officers that have told us they never locked their doors in those uh, apartments. They felt that safe out there, that uh, they knew where the crooks were in their neighborhood up at the top of the hill. Uh, there's a shot of the tower uh, weapons, again, a Thompson submachine gun and high-powered rifle there. 
a uh, couple uh, the vehicles. People are surprised uh, about the, uh, the trucks that they, we still have on to on the island. Uh, those uh, two panel trucks would have been used to transport uh, the convicts uh, up to the penitentiary. Uh, one of those vehicles was known as the Black Mariah. I've got a 1934 fire engine on Alcatraz, a Diamond T fire engine that we've restored, and we drive that around uh, the island. People love the old vehicles. I've also got an old old uh, Chevy pickup truck, that uh, same type of trucks that they used on the island. There's the Diamond T, and uh, this is still a functioning fire engine. It's the oldest fire engine in the National Park system uh, that uh, is still a functioning fire engine. So we get firefighters that ask just to see the fire engine. Uh, uh, nice shot of Broadway looking down the main corridor and the uh, Correctional officer there, uh, there in that shot. Uh, uh, for a while they wore badges, but then they they got rid of the badges. They they had a, a blazer for a uniform, and uh, uh, they were professionals. Uh, they dealt with the convicts uh, 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 professionally. Uh, uh, it wasn't hey, hi Dave, how you doing? It was very strict. They weren't even allowed to talk the convicts, so they kept these people under control at least for the first few years. Uh, the uh, convicts were not allowed to talk. The cells basically are the size of a pool table. Uh, it's a five by nine cell. Uh, so that's a regulation pool table, five feet across, nine feet long, seven feet tall. And you spend maybe 23 hours a day in a jail cell on Alcatraz Island. Um, it's your home, basically. You can see some artwork in the back of the cell there. And uh, they were allowed to have painting supplies and also instruments uh, in their cells there to occupy their time. But a convict that uh, arrived on Alcatraz would have uh, been given four rights. Uh, shelter, uh, food, the best food in the system. Uh, it was, it was uh, not uncommon to have uh, a steak dinner once a week out there, uh, fresh fish out of the bay. And the idea was to uh, keep these folks happy uh, through uh, their stomach and they wouldn't be complaining about uh, the food on Alcatraz. Uh, nice shot of the correctional officer opening up the doors. And when those doors open and close, they uh, have a nice sound effect. Uh, some call it the slammer. And uh, when you hear that door close behind you, it makes you, it's a reminder basically uh, uh, to the cons that uh, we've got you and there's no escape. Great shot of the convicts coming uh, back from, uh, say, lunch, and uh, they would be uh, transported three, or they would make their weight, I should say, to the mess hall three times a day and uh, dine in that mess hall. About 20 minutes to eat your meal and then back to your cell. We've got a nice playground for uh, the men on the island, and uh, this shot actually shows them lined up to go to work. So at the north end of Alcatraz uh, was a factory building where the convicts did the military's laundry. So they would line up out in the wreck yard and then march out to their workstations at the north end. Um, penitentiary building, this shot here shows you the uh, prison building. It was the largest concrete structure on the west coast when it was built in 1912. And uh, in this rec yard, we've got shuffle boards. In this shot, you can see there are bleachers where the cons could sit on the steps and just look out at the San Francisco Bay. So off in the distance, that's uh, Mount Tamapias and uh, Sausalito just to the left of Mount uh, Tam. And uh, great shot of the island. It's a small island, again, 22-acre rock. Um, the uh, north end is what you see on the right side of the shot here. That's the original industries building that hung on the cliff of the island. And they had a lot of problems when the convicts would go out to that building working in that factory uh, of escape attempts. Uh, people would pop out the back window of that building and hit the water and take off swimming. In 1938, they had a major breakout in that uh, structure where three convicts uh, jumped a correctional officer in the factory building and uh, hit him in the head with a hammer, killed the officer outright. And they climbed up onto the roof of the factory on that uh, edge of the rock there. And there was a bridge that connected to the wreck yard wall. And the plan was to take the weapons from the guard tower up on the roof and shoot their way down to the dock. 
Uh, the officer stopped him up on the roof and uh, ended their escape attempt. And the feds, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, basically built a new factory building for the convicts to work, and that's the elongated building just in front of the old factory. And they uh, moved the operations across the street, and uh, the military's laundry. Uh, in the Bay Area was sent to Alcatraz along with the post office and San Francisco sent their dirty laundry out to Alcatraz and uh, that whole second floor of the industries building was used as a laundry during World War II. The water tank, I think you can see it just to the left of the rec yard there, uh, was filled every few days and uh, fresh water had to be brought in to Alcatraz. Uh, the uh, island did not have uh, any fresh water. The military learns uh, when they arrived, drilling down into the rock 200 feet uh, to come up with a fresh water system and they came up with salt water, so uh, they had to transport water out to Alcatraz and, uh, or during a Civil War, collect rainwater. Nice shot again of the factory building, and uh, there you have an officer with a high-powered weapon looking down on the uh, factories at the north end. You can also see the uh, bridge system that I was just speaking of where the convicts were gonna uh, escape from the roof of that factory building at the far end of the island. Uh, inside the industries, basically they had construction uh, of desks and chairs and gloves uh, were produced for um, uh, the, the federal government uh, along with the laundry, of course netting for the Navy, uh, a variety of jobs. Uh, there's a, a con with uh, some canvas gloves that they produced on the island. So seven cents an hour is what they would have paid a convict to work on Alcatraz. You couldn't spend the money on Alcatraz. Uh, it went into a bank account. Once you were released from prison, you could access that, uh, that bank account. So after 10 years, that seven cents adds up. Trousers were produced out there on the island. Some folks worked in the kitchen. Um, uh, others worked out in the gardens of Alcatraz, but the majority worked uh, uh, out at the north end in the factory. This is a, a shot of the uh, mess hall. And some called it the gas chamber. If you look up on the beam in this photo here to the left uh, of the, the room there, you can see a tear gas can. And this could have been a volatile situation to have uh, 200 convicts eating in this mess hall there. So uh, the tear gas was a backup, basically, if uh, uh, there was a fight or a riot situation, the officers could uh, hit the button and the tear gas would drop down. Uh, religious services were held once a week on the island, so this is a nice shot of the chapel. And uh, also you can see a screen behind the uh, altar there. So twice a month they showed movies uh, for the federal prisoners. Uh, Shirley Temple uh, was a big favorite uh, for the uh, federal convicts during the 30s. Uh, they were family movies that they were showing, Disney movies, that sort of thing. And that was a perk to be able to go to uh, the theater chapel. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly, we've been told, was an altar boy and a projectionist on the island. They had a jazz band in the 30s. Al Capone actually wrote some, uh, 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 some music while he was out on the island. And he played uh, tenor banjo in the uh, jazz band. Um, another shot of a baseball game going on out in the rec yard. So again, this was uh, on the weekends that they'd be allowed to go out into the rec yard. Um, gambling was not allowed, but uh, uh, they, they uh, could use dominoes, and some say they dabble a little bit with gambling out there. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly is in this shot. The uh, man without the hat is George Kelly. Another shot of the rec yard. The gardens of Alcatraz, as I mentioned, we've got historic gardens out there dating back to the Victorian era when the military post introduces the gardens. So uh, who continued to work in the gardens? But the convicts and uh, the warden's wife also had her gardens uh, right out uh, past her house. A nice shot uh, to show the tiered gardens and a beautiful lawn out there. And this was all watered with the uh, uh, shower. Uh, uh, they reused the, uh, the water from the shower facility in the prison building. I love that shot from a guard tower looking down on the gardens. And you can see the Bay Bridge off in the distance. Uh, there, again, is that bridge that the officers could patrol and uh, keep an eye on the prisoners down uh, below. 
Uh, Alcatraz originally was built as a military disciplinary barracks in 1912, this building that we're looking at. And one of the main reasons uh, for closing Alcatraz was the foundation. This is the interior uh, or the basement level of the penitentiary. And there were some major problems uh, with, uh, with uh, that foundation. Um, this actually was also used, I got to throw in, as a dungeon during the federal system. Uh, they placed people down below the cell house into small rooms, and uh, they didn't have a light uh, system down in that basement, so it could be pretty pitch dark. Uh, in 1940, the Federal Bureau of Prisons decides to build a new treatment unit, so this shot here shows the solitary confinement that most people see on the tour. But uh, at one point, they were using the basement. These cells are freezer-style doors that can be soundproof. And talking with some of the officers and the convicts, evidently these cells were kept dark. Um, it's illegal to have a dark cell, but evidently there were some power problems with these cells. Once you close that uh, solid door, uh, it could be soundproof, but also dark in those cells. Shot of one of the escape attempt heads. This is uh, uh, a dummy head that was used during a breakout in 1962. And uh, Clint Eastwood did the uh, famous uh, Escape from Alcatraz movie. A lot of people have seen that over the years, have wondered, did they make it? And you can see this is a historic shot of the cell. What they did is they went underneath the um, sink. Uh, there was a vent that they opened up and it's disguised with the clothing hanging there, but basically they opened up a small air vent and drilled it out and climbed behind the cell and used the plumbing as a ladder to climb up on the rooftop. And uh, three men uh, made it out of the building and uh, they are still wanted. Classic postcard, a lot of people uh, get a kick out of this still. Uh, and. Uh, you know, the island uh, lasts till 1963 as a supermax prison. It wasn't the escape attempts to close Alcatraz down, it was the operating costs. And Robert Kennedy had a report done on the island, found out it was costing three times the amount to house somebody uh, out on Alcatraz. So the last prisoners leave Alcatraz in 1963, March 21st, 63. We have a, a photo exhibit out there and right now. Life magazine photographer Lee Weiner actually came out to Alcatraz and uh, filmed the closing of prison. And we've got those photos on display in our industries building at the North End. So the island was up for sale, and this is an artist's rendition of what uh, uh, some folks wanted to see, a peace center. Uh, on Alcatraz Island. Uh, you've got the geodesic dome there, and uh, there were lots of uh, ideas on uh, what to do. Some wanted to see the birds get it. Others wanted to see a nudist colony on Alcatraz. Uh, but there was a discussion of also a hotel and a casino out there. And Mr. Hunt from Texas, Lamar Hunt, was going to uh, uh, negotiate, was negotiating with the federal government to purchase the property. And a few years ago, I actually talked with a GSA representative, General Services Administration was uh, uh, looking at selling the property. And, and uh, uh, he said that in 1966, the uh, GSA appraised Alcatraz at $1 million. You could have purchased the whole island. And uh, so that was big money back in 66. But we, uh, we all know that uh, uh, nowadays you, you, you can't even buy a teardown for under a million dollars in San Francisco. So, but you could have had that whole island. Native Americans in the uh, area going to school in San Francisco uh, hear about uh, the proposal of Alcatraz and becoming a casino. And they find an old treaty that states that uh, Native Americans have rights to Alcatraz. And they uh, uh, proposed an idea to have a cultural center on Alcatraz. Well, the federal government said, uh, well, you're out of luck on that. That's an old treaty, like a lot of treaties that we broke with the Native Americans. So they basically take the island, and this is a, a shot of the early occupiers uh, arriving at the dock. About 80 college students arrive at the dock of Alcatraz, and the one security officer there said, welcome and they stayed for 19 months. You can see Indians welcome, uh, the tag on the wall there, uh, United Indian Property, Custer had it coming, Red Power. These are all slogans that we still uh, have on Alcatraz. We haven't painted over these, and uh, uh, 
we refer to them now as uh, uh, political messaging. And uh, we are actually restoring uh, the graffiti on Alcatraz. It was the first gathering of the tribes. Uh, uh, we had a huge population of uh, Native Americans in the Bay Area that had been relocated off the res and uh, settling in San Francisco. And the United States government's plan was to terminate the Indian reservation system in the United States. And uh, so these young college students arrive. And at one point, we had upwards to 500 people living on Alcatraz. Uh, teepees were set up, and only Native Americans were allowed on the island. The press came out and, of course, interviewed uh, the Native Americans on the island. They even had their own flag on the guard tower. You can see there uh, the broken uh, peace pipe. And uh, my patch is uh, in the, the shape of an uh, Indian arrowhead with the white bison at the base of the patch. And uh, in the Lakota uh, legend, uh, when the white buffalo come back, all the people will be at peace. And so this was the first time where we had uh, Native Americans from across the United States gather. So you had the Lakota and the Crow, uh, the Chippewa and the Navajo and the Apache, they all came to Alcatraz and got media attention to what had happened to the Native Americans. Killed off, placed on reservations, and the final blow was to terminate those Indian reservations. Um, and it worked. President Nixon sides with the American Indian, and uh, we have uh, a, a leader, Richard Oakes, who was an uh, 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 amazing speaker. Here is uh, Richard on the dock there. And um, the sad part of this story is, is that one of his family members uh, dies in a uh, 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 one of the apartments on Alcatraz. Uh, young girl, Yvonne Oakes, 12 years old, fell to her death. So this gentleman here, once he leaves the island, the occupation um, changes and, and uh, uh, there's a little bit of fighting of who's going to be in charge out there. The government officials came to the island and talked with the Native Americans and uh, uh, in discussion. Uh, at one point, they offered them Fort Mason as a cultural center and they turned Fort Mason down uh, next to Fisherman's Wharf. Um, but. Uh, it was a student movement. It was a nonviolent movement, and uh, and basically it lasted for 19 months. Restaurants from San Francisco sent food and supplies out to the Native American Indians on the island. And uh, this tower, this is a historic shot, uh, but we have restored that uh, political messaging on the tower. So when you come out to the island, you'll actually see that. And it's a great tool to talk about uh, uh, the Native Americans on the island. Um, uh, it ended basically with uh, fires occurring on Alcatraz. Uh, four buildings burn up mysteriously. And uh, this is a shot of the lighthouse uh, quarters and the warden's house the next day after the fire. And uh, when you've, you've got a lighthouse out, you've got a navigational hazard, and that's when the federal police move in and take back Alcatraz from the Native Americans. But uh, it worked. Uh, President Nixon apologizes to the American Indian for genocide, and he preserved the reservation system forever. So it's a, a big part of the island's history. In fact, the Native Americans feel it's the most important history to Alcatraz, the gathering of the tribes. This is a recent shot of a sunrise ceremony on Alcatraz. Um, and we still have Native Americans coming out on uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, on Columbus and Thanksgiving Day. They used to call it un-Thanksgiving and un-Columbus uh, un Day, but uh, uh, a little more PC now with uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. And we get about 5,000 people uh, on those holidays coming out to gather on Alcatraz. Early shot of uh, some of the original rangers. They were young folks that uh, uh, were creative and uh, did the programs on the island and uh, classic uh, Smokey the Bear outfits. This actually is a former Alcatraz convict, Frank Hadfield, that was uh, hired by the National Park Service to give tours. He was told not to tell the visitors that he was a former convict, but the word got out that there was a, a former uh, con giving tours on Alcatraz. 
And our mission has been to interpret the island's history, and uh, this is a, a recent staff shot of uh, the rangers on the island, and uh, we're responsible for protecting uh, the resources and, uh, and interpreting the island's history. And um, as I mentioned earlier, the layers of history of Alcatraz from uh, the military all the way up to the uh, occupation in 1969, there's a lot to discuss out there. And as I said earlier, we uh, are restoring buildings. The fire engine that you see in this shot was restored uh, about uh, 15 years ago. 100,000 just to restore that uh, fire engine, and then there's the Chevy truck, too, uh, uh, next to her. So um, it's a fun job. I, I still look forward to going to work. I get to drive that fire engine around, and uh, uh, people from all over the world are excited to see that island. Uh, the fire boat uh, Phoenix is our backup. If we've got fire, uh, any uh, uh, fire needs out there, they'll hopefully respond. Uh, it's quite a production. We've got a, a tram system that transports people up to the penitentiary. Every half an hour, we've got 300 people arriving on the island. And the birds uh, have always been there, but uh, since we are closing approximately half the island uh, to the general public, uh, uh, we've got nesting birds uh, in many of the closed areas. And uh, this is a western gull with a, a, a young uh, baby. Uh, they're kind of cute with the... Uh, the, the spots there, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a bird rookery, uh, basically. Uh, you can see the birds in flight there. Uh, we're doing a little rescue in this shot of uh, a bird that got caught in, in one of the fences uh, on the island. Uh, just off in the distance behind me there is the uh, housing for, or what's left of the housing for the correctional officers. The one sad thing is the government tore down the apartments after the Indian takeover, and they left us with the rebel pile there. And uh, we are placing uh, vegetation on top of that rubble pile, and it's, uh, we've got trees starting to grow out of that rubble pile on the south end of the island. Uh, we've had prisoners working on the island. We still have... Uh, folks coming out periodically to work and do restoration on the island. And as I mentioned again, our mission is to stabilize the buildings. This is one of the last guard towers on Alcatraz that was uh, fully restored. And uh, the latest building, this uh, structure here, about three million went into this building. So little by little, things are happening on the rock. Uh, the cell doors on Alcatraz were stabilized and restored by uh, Southern Steel out of San Antonio, Texas. And uh, they donated about uh, uh, $400,000 worth of equipment to get the slammer uh, working again. And they're, they're in the paper, they got a little press. And, and uh, basically, uh, we put the slam back in the slammer. Uh, it was a big job to, to tear all those boxes open and uh, and repair the the, the cells, the uh, the bars, and the uh, the different parts that were missing. Uh, this is a nice shot of the cliff stabilization. Uh, we've gunited that rock so that uh, lighthouse doesn't fall down. Um, also, to the right of the lighthouse is what's left of the warden's house, and you never know. Maybe that'll be restored someday. You know. Um, so little by little, things are happening. Uh, shot of the roof here, we actually installed solar panels on the roof. And uh, there's a shot from the lighthouse looking down on some of those panels. And this was stimulus money that was used to bring in the solar to Alcatraz, $8 million worth of uh, solar panels and uh, batteries included with that uh, $8 million there. There's the finished job there. You can see the water tower covered up. Uh, this was a couple years ago now, but we uh, restored that water tower. And uh, that's a shot from the water tower I took uh, looking over on the uh, penitentiary rooftop. There's a nice shot. And there's the graffiti. We've actually restored that graffiti, and it's uh, a bright red paint once again, uh, free uh, Native Americans Indian land. And, of course, the windows. Russ never sleeps. This is uh, the factory building uh, where we replaced 7,000 windows. And in this building, this is where we have our art displays. A few years ago, we had uh, Weiwei, uh, the Chinese artist's work was out there. And uh, 
we had to get permission from the State Department to actually have his artwork out there. I pushed some buttons. Uh, there were, se uh, what was it? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it was uh, two million Legos laid out on the floor of this building. And uh, political prisoners' uh, portraits were were produced out of these Legos. Uh, I guess Wei Wei's son, you know, a young kid playing with Legos, and he, he had a great idea. Well, let's do uh, portraits, and uh, it uh, most of the folks I'd never heard of, but you could read about these political prisoners. A lot of folks from Asia, um, uh, but there were a few folks that I recognized in the uh, the. Uh, uh, portraits. Uh, Martin Luther King was next to Edward Snowden. Chelsea Manning next to uh, Nelson Mandela. And a lot of people question why would we uh, want to uh, have these folks uh, on display there, but uh, who's to say how they're going to be perceived in the future? Beautiful shot from the uh, industries looking out on the Golden Gate there. And the lighting is just fantastic for artwork inside this building. So I hope to see more uh, light out, or more artwork, I should say. Uh, nice shot of some of the volunteers. That's how we run the parks. We've got uh, volunteers working in the gardens, uh, stabilizing the original gardens. And uh, as I said earlier, it's an amazing island to visit, just with the beauty of the rock. And uh, there's some handballs in her hand that were actually f went over the wreck yard wall from the prisoners and with these uh, folks working in the gardens there, uh, discovering artifacts out in the gardens. Uh, this is Officer's Row and you can see some uh, beautiful vegetation there. So the island definitely is an amazing national park site and uh, it's got so much to the island, and uh, the preservation work uh, continues. Uh, we've even got uh, a Concrete Preservation Institute working on the island, reproducing the concrete railings, and these are college students that are learning about uh, uh, concrete uh, material, and we've got a lot of concrete that needs to be restored on the island, so nice shot of the railings being restored. and. Uh, more and more of the island is being open. So former deputy chief of police, Stan Cordes on top of the Alcatraz light. And he retired from SFPD and came to Alcatraz and worked as a volunteer for about 28 years on the island. And he did the talks and uh, he was uh, one of my mentors on the island. Uh, and we are always looking for folks to volunteer and to do the talks on the rock. It's uh, an exciting place to, uh, uh, to talk uh, with the general public. And uh, uh, we have an alumni every year. This is a uh, convict from Alcatraz on the left in this shot. And the man to my right is Jim Albright. Uh, Bob, Luke, and Jim get along now, but... Uh, uh, they were uh, kind of on the other side of the fence back in the day. We have an alumni gathering coming up this August, uh, August 13th, uh, the Sunday this year. We'll have the alumni coming back to Alcatraz to uh, relay the stories of uh, what it was like to be an officer out uh, on the island. This uh, woman here is Betty Lou Vickery, and she was an Army brat. And she came back for the alumni gathering and talked about the military's history. And the man standing next to her was also a child when it was a military uh, prison. And uh, of course, the press always wants to hear uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the convict side of the story. And uh, Alcatraz definitely sells. Uh, uh, we'll feed the alumni. We have uh, had music over the years. Uh, uh, when the alumni come back, they're entertained and uh, fed. And uh, we got a nice shot of the, the prison uh, band playing. This shot's kind of fun. This is the uh, family members of the Anglins doing a press conference uh, with the U.S. Marshals. And people are fascinated about escape attempts. Uh, did anybody, anybody make it? And uh, it's, uh, it's still up for a debate. Uh, this uh, uh, press release did not uh, have the cons uh, show up. We thought maybe they'd come out of the woodwork, but they didn't. So uh, the three men that escaped in 1962 uh, are still one of these are family members talking about uh, uh, their uh, brothers. Uh, the two sisters of the Anglin brothers and I. Movie shoots, we've had, uh, well, that's Testament uh, doing a, uh, uh, a rock and roll video on Alcatraz. A lot of heavy metal uh, videos have been shot out there. And uh, here they are with the Marshall stacks and performing uh, in the old mess hall. So 
Uh, never a dull moment out there. And uh, Hollywood definitely has created an iconic place for people to come and visit. Uh, this is J.J. Abrams' TV show being filmed out there. There's been 12 movies shot on location. And I really think that that uh, Hollywood influence has created an iconic place for people to come and, and see the island. There I am some, with some actors dressed up as correctional officers. Uh, comedians, uh, George Lopez out on the island. Uh, there's Daryl Hannah signing my hat. I've, I've got kind of tr a tradition to have uh, celebrities uh, autograph the inside of my hat. So uh, recently I, I got Jimmy Page and uh, Johnny Depp to, to sign the hat. So uh, they all come out to the rock uh, to see uh, the layers of history. And uh, of course, again, the TV shows. And uh, here's, here's a nice shot of the exhibit that we've got on Alcatraz right now. This is the uh, last day of Alcatraz, the former convicts. Uh, some of them are in this shot here looking at pictures of themselves <laughs> leaving the rock. And uh, well, there's a shot of the prison that's in pretty bad shape in this shot. But I got to tell you, the Park Service uh, has uh, put $30 million into stabilizing this wall, so it doesn't look like this anymore. Um, uh, some of the, the wall has been uh, replaced, and uh, it's a big job, and the exterior walls were popping the concrete off, so um, uh, this now has been restored, and uh, uh, it's been a hard day for that ranger there, and uh, uh, that's the end of the uh, little... Uh, PowerPoint display here. So I, I hope that you can all come out to the rock and uh, uh, learn about uh, the island and, uh, and see it personally there.